Claire Wood. Claire Wood grew up in Batley, West Yorkshire. By 2007, Claire had moved to Salford in Manchester with her young daughter and was looking for a new relationship. Claire was described as enthusiastic, clever, talented, upbeat and fun-loving. Her father said, Claire was a free spirit. She never brought trouble to the door. She was a canny lass with a wicked sense of humour. Claire met George Appleton of Facebook. It went well for a while with Claire describing Appleton as the love of her life. She even wanted to marry him. Gradually, Appleton became more and more abusive. Appleton began to control Claire. He'd make threats to harm her, intimidate her, shout at her, smash her things, punched holes in her walls. He broke her windows, ripped out her phone from the wall and even raped her. Appleton would prevent Claire from going out. He would check up on Claire and see who she's communicating with. He would even check her social media accounts. Claire wrote in her diary that she wished well for Appleton, but she couldn't stay with him anymore because she had a daughter to consider. Also that she knew that she wouldn't be happy with Appleton. In October 2008, 18 months into the relationship, Claire had had enough. She wrote a letter to Appleton saying that she didn't want to be with him anymore. You scare me and I can't be with someone that I'm frightened of. Please leave me alone, that's all I ask. After the letter, Appleton began harassing Claire even more. He was described as not being able to cope with rejection. His harassment and threats to hurt Claire increased. He'd turn up to her property at all times of the day and night. Claire resisted bowing to Appleton's threats and intimidation and he just kept getting worse. Claire's father, Michael Brown, asked Claire to come and stay with him for a while, but Claire didn't want to uproot her daughter, and she didn't want to be chased out by Appleton. Claire's father had taken an instant dislike to Appleton. Appleton had told Claire that he had been to prison for motoring offences. Claire's father, having worked in prison services, found this to be quite absurd. He was shocked because in his experience and in his time working in prison services, he hadn't come across people being imprisoned merely for motoring offences. What both Claire and her father, Michael Brown, were unaware of was that George Appleton had an extensive criminal history and violent past. Three years prior to meeting Claire, Appleton was in a relationship with a woman who described him as being controlling and possessive. Even for small things, like grocery shopping, he would go with her and wouldn't leave her alone. She described him to have had random violent outbursts, and then that temper would last for days. He had tried to strangle this woman, and he had threatened to throw acid in her face. Appleton's previous partner said that he would follow her to work every day, sometimes a few cars down, sometimes on foot. He just couldn't take rejection. Appleton had several harassment orders out against him, including one issued after he had kidnapped a woman at knife point. Claire had also reached out to the police multiple times. In October 2008, Claire contacted the police and reported that Appleton had threatened to burn her house down, smash her windows, have Claire stabbed, and had threatened her with an iron. He had also been verbally threatening and abusive. Appleton was arrested, but released on bail. Appleton challenged his bail conditions, and they were altered so that he could visit his friend who lived just a few doors away from Claire. In January 2009, Claire reported to police that Appleton had sexually assaulted her. Appleton was arrested, but bailed. Police installed a panic alarm in Claire's house and signposted her to local support services. Claire reported Appleton for multiple breaches of his bail conditions, but they were considered to be relatively minor breaches by police. On the 2nd of February 2009, George Appleton gained entry to Claire's property. Appleton raped Claire either before or shortly after he had strangled her and hit her on the head with a heavy object. He then set her body on fire. He even put an ashtray on Claire to make it look like she had fallen asleep smoking. 
Claire hadn't even had the opportunity to press her panic alarm. She was just 36 years old. Appleton went on the run, prompting a nationwide manhunt. On the 12th of February, 10 days after Claire's body was discovered by police, Appleton was found in a nearby pub where he had hung himself. Police discovered that Appleton had multiple online aliases on multiple social media, networking and dating sites. Appleton was even dubbed the Facebook fugitive after dozens of women contacted the police because of his predatory behaviour. He had been having multiple affairs, even whilst he was with Claire. Claire's father, Michael Brown, refused to accept that Claire's death was for nothing. He campaigned for information to be provided to partners or their close associates by police if they had a history of domestic abuse. This could prevent someone from being a victim of abuse. Initially, a pilot scheme was launched involving four police forces, Greater Manchester, Gwent, Nottinghamshire and Wiltshire. On March the 8th, 2014, Claire's Law, officially known as the Domestic Violence Disclosure Scheme, was rolled out nationally. The domestic violence protection orders were also introduced at the same time, which allow police to ban a person from going to a certain place for up to 28 days. Claire's law gives anyone the right to ask police if they believe that they or someone they know is in a relationship with an individual that could be abusive towards them. It provides for the right to ask and the right to know. The right to ask is where police can be approached by a concerned individual and the police can look at if there is any evidence or useful information that could protect a person if a disclosure is made. Only then will relevant criminal history be shared with the relevant person. The right to know is where there is information requested by a professional where they feel that their client is at risk and apply on behalf of that client for the client to be informed if there is anything that needs to be shared with them that could protect them.